Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning to all of our viewers who are coming in to Cyber Sanctuary, Shallow Cyber Sanctuary. Thank you for coming on in to worship with us today and certainly on this most glorious day uh, and celebratory day of, as we are honoring our mothers. Come on, let's just thank the Lord our God for all of our mothers. We thank God for every mom out there on today. God bless you. We celebrate you. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's let's just begin to uh, sanctify our space, consecrate our space. Let's invoke the presence of God into our space this morning. Wherever it is you're viewing, if you're still lying in bed, come on, get up out of the bed. If you're sitting on the couch, got comfortable, grab the bowl of popcorn. Come on, put the bowl down. Uh, get on up off the couch. Come on, just stretch a little bit. Put your arms up, wave your hands. Come on, let's begin to invoke and invite the presence of God into our space right where we are. Hallelujah. Come on, let's transform our living space into a sanctuary. We came to worship the God, uh, our, our Father, the Lord, our God. We come to worship the God of our salvation. Come on, let's bless his holy name. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's bless him. God, we exalt you. God, we magnify you. God, we bless your holy name. Speak good of him. That's what worship means. Worship means to speak good of him out of your heart. Come on, out of the fruit of your lips, from the fruit of your lips, bless the Lord our God. God, you're worthy, you're mighty, you're strong. Even in all of my downfall, God, you still put me back up. But despite of what you do for me, God, you've been good. And I just wanna center myself in on you on your heart. Even in seasons where I don't see your hand, I know your heart and you are good. And we come to worship you today. Come on, let's bless his holy name. Come on, speak good of him. I know it feels uncomfortable, uh, but come on, let's let's worship God. This is where, what they did in the first church in the book of Acts. They had worship in their homes. They had church in their homes. If we can't do it in our homes, it doesn't make sense for us to try to get it done in the church. So come on, before we get back into the building, let's do what we ought to be doing in the building right here at home. Come on, bless his name. Get up from where you are. Stand up from where you are. Honor God as if it is an attorney, a judge uh, walking in to sit on the bench. Uh, come on, let's honor God as if he's walking into our room, into our lives this morning. God, we greet you with a kiss from our praise. God, we bless your holy name. You alone are worthy. We magnify you. We adore you. We lavish our love upon you, God. You alone, God, deserve all of our praise, honor, in the glory in the name of Jesus there is nobody but you there is nobody but you even in this there is nobody that we look unto we look unto the hills from which cometh our help our help comes from the Lord come on church lift up your heads even right now lift up your heads oh ye gates and let the everlasting God our father our king come on in come on let him lift you up on today he's worthy aren't you glad come on aren't you grateful aren't you blessed today that you see you're able to see another day he woke you up he watched over you made provision for you come on let's bless the name of the lord put your hands together and give god a hand clap of praise yeah i know it feels uncomfortable but you should get familiar with this because we ought to be worshiping god each and every day in our homes don't have to wait for sunday come on monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday so when we get online and we get on tune in to the broadcast we're ready to bless god because because we've been doing it all throughout the week. God, you're mighty and strong, and we thank you for being who you've been to all of us. Now, God, I'm asking in the name of Jesus the Christ that you envelop all of us, God, Oh, right now and permeate all of our places, God, in the name of Jesus, infuse us with your presence. Let us feel you today. Father, I invite you to have your way on this broadcast. We thank you for the ministries of Shallow Baptist Church, and we thank you for all of those who are tuning in today, whether it be through Facebook or YouTube or on the call conference line. In the name of Jesus, let all of us feel your presence. Let all of us have not just an experience of church, but God, might we have an encounter with you 
you. In the name of Jesus, I pray you shake the very foundations of our lives right now. And God, that you let it be known that you are God. Be strong and mighty right now. God, we're asking for a move. We're asking God for a major move. God, do your work, do your will. And God, we will be forever careful, but to give your name, the praise, the honor in the glory. God, in the name of Jesus, I am asking for you to be in this service on today. Be in the midst, God. Be in the midst of our bedrooms, our kitchens, our home, our living rooms, wherever we are. If we're on at, at work this morning, wherever we might be, God, let us feel your glory. Let us experience your presence in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for all mothers today. We ask your continued blessings in covering, in provision, in pouring back into all of the nurturers who've blessed our lives. God, thank you so much for our moms demonstrating who you are, the very essence and presence of your heart. God, I thank you and ask even now as we enter into this service that God, you would have your way. In Jesus name, we pray. God, save, heal, deliver, touch somebody today who is turned on this broadcast. Might their life never be the same in Jesus name. Come on, somebody ought to shout hallelujah and amen, amen to God be the glory as we invoke God's presence. I feel him. I don't know about you, but I feel him in this place. I feel him. I'm all by myself looking at a little dot, but I feel the presence of God in this place. And I pray you feel him on today. God bless you again. Welcome. Uh, to the Cyber Sanctuary of Shallow Baptist Church. We are glad to have you on today sharing with us on this special day, most special occasion celebrating our mothers on Mother's Day. And so we've got uh, some special treats for you on today, and I'm indeed glad to have them sharing with me on today. I'm going to bring them on in, and we're going to continue moving forward on our services on today. But we, we thank God for all of our mothers today, whether it's through physical birth, whether it's through adoption, what, whatever the association, the familial association may be. Uh, you may be a guardian, maybe a grandmother, maybe an auntie, whomever it is, a soccer mom, basketball, mom, neighborhood mom. Y'all know about those neighborhood moms. Things have changed nowadays. There used to be a time and day where the neighborhood mom would keep you straight if your mom didn't see you out there in the corner. Hallelujah. For all the moms, we thank God for all the mothers on today. I thank God for my wife. I thank God for her motherhood and what God has so graciously done in and through her life for our son and just watching her grow and develop into an awesome and incredible mom. Um, we thank God for you, uh, Constance Leading Lady Cheeks. We thank God for you, Minister Cheeks. We thank God for my mom, Minister Paulette Cheeks. Happy Mother's Day uh, to my mom who's viewing and sharing with us on this morning. I know she's in one service, gonna come out and jump in on our service, but I thank God for, for my sister and all of the mothers and my family, my immediate and extended family. God bless you today and all the moms connected to Shiloh Baptist Church. We salute you. And so we've got a special treat for you today. Normally second Sundays, I youth and our teens lead us in services. Our youth and teen disciples are amazing. I am so proud of them and watching them grow and develop in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so normally they would lead worship, but they, today we have a special tribute that we want to share with you all. And so we have this morning, we have Christian Sutton, we have Jason Woodbury and Evan Robinson are going to come and bless us on today in that order. So we're going to ask that Kristen would come. Kristen would share with us. Good morning, Kristen Sutton. How are you? Good to see you this morning. God bless you. All right, I'm going to turn it over to you. Let the Lord use you. You going to share something for our mothers on today? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, good morning. I will be reading a poem, A Mother's Love by Helen Steiner Rice. Uh, a mother's love is something that no one can explain. It is made of deep devotion and of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring come what may, for nothing can destroy it or, or take that love away. It is patient and forgiving when all others are forsaken. It, and it never fails or falters, even though the heart is breaking. It, it, it believes beyond believing when the, when the world around condemns. And it glows with all the beauty of the wearer's brightest gems. For all, by his, 
the jet pack. And it defends all explanation and it and it still remains a secret like the other myster mysteries of creation and many and many splendor, splendor miracle. Man can man cannot understand in another in another world there is evidence of God's tender guiding hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you so much. To God be the glory. Give mama a big hug for us with the cheeks. It's happy Mother Day, Mother's Day, Rhonda. God bless you. Great job, Christian. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. We love you. We send you all hugs and pray the Lord's continued blessings and covering over you. You enjoying being at home, missing your friends in school? Yes. You ready for school? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, I'm ready to get back out there too and see others. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you. God bless you. Continue to do great things in the Lord, our God. Thank you so much, Kristen. Next, uh, we're going to have, let's see, Jason Woodbury is going to come and share and bless us with a tribute as well. Hey, Master Jason, God bless you. Looking sharp today, man. I see you with your bow tie. God bless you with your Mother's Day wears. Looking great, man. All right, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much for sharing in this tribute. Go ahead, Jason, Brother Woodbury. God bless you, sir. Good morning, my name is Jason. I hope you and your family are doing well. Today is a very special day for all mothers. On behalf of all kids, we sincerely thank you for helping us to get to where we are in life and paving the way for where we're going with your direct guidance of love. And I want to especially thank my mom for leading me down the right path in life. And I hope uh, you enjoy your fantastic day. All right. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for sharing that with us on today. Are you uh, are you making your way through your studies and your schooling and all things that you need to do in regards to your work for class, getting your work done? Yes. All right. Are you missing your friends? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, praise God. Listen, we pray that God will get us back soon to some kind of sense of normalcy and sharing with one another. So we miss you guys. Give mama a big hug. Tell your mama, uh, Sister Woodbury, Debbie, a happy Mother's Day. Give her a hug for us. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you for sharing with us. Y'all think carries these babies. I, I'm so proud. Bless you, sir. All right. Next, we're going to have Evan Robinson who come and share with us as well. I'm grateful for these babies, uh, these youths and the teens coming on in. Hey, Evan, what's up, man? Good morning. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I see you, man. Praise the Lord. God is good. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Uh, we're going to turn it over to you and allow you to lead, share with us what the Lord has laid on your heart. Good morning, Shiloh. My name is Evan Robinson. Um, I would like to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are watching. Thank you for all that you do. We are very grateful. We really are. And especially to my mother, I would like to read her a poem. She's downstairs. She doesn't know that I'm doing this, so I'm just going to go ahead. You mean the world to me. I am so lucky to have you around, offering me good advice and keeping my feet on the ground. You have always been there for me throughout any trouble or strife. You have taught me so many things about how to get through my daily life. You mean so much to me, and I thought that you should know I love you so very much. I appreciate you, Mom, and thank you for all that you do. Happy Mother's Day. Praise God. Awesome, man. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, run on down there and go give Mom a big hug for us all from the Cheekses, from the Shallow family, man. Tell your Mom we said Happy Mother's Day. That was phenomenal. Thank you so much, man. God is so good. I'm so proud of you, man. You. Listen, enjoy the rest of the day. Tell the rest of the family we said hello. Keep yes, doing your work. Keep your studies up. Stay yes, consistent. All right. Yes, all right, man. God bless you, man. Love you guys, man. Thank God for y'all. This is phenomenal. God is so good. I thank God for Minister Beasley doing a phenomenal job as our youth and teen pastor, uh, allowing uh, the Lord to use her in such a way to be able to raise up uh, our emerging leaders, our church of today, and pulling out their potential in their gifts. And so I'm grateful for them coming on with me today and sharing uh, those tributes from their heart to bless their mothers and certainly all moms who are sharing on this morning. Really quick.
quickly, I do want to share a few things just before we get to the word, a few things, a few notes. One in particular, uh, if you're accessing this, uh, whether it be through YouTube or Facebook, that means you have access to the Internet. Praise the Lord. Please visit our website for all of the announcements, notes and information that is necessary to help keep us connected. There are various opportunities God has afforded us to stay connected as a church. And so I need you to visit our website. The website is right there in the bottom, scrolling across the page. I need you to visit our website to get all the information. There is a link that says stay virtually connected. It gives you all of the offerings so that we can continue to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ so that we can stay in fellowship with one another and that we can continue to be an encouragement to each other as we're going through this pandemic. And certainly we thank God for the ministries who are continuing to do uh, what's necessary to keep us onward. And so I thank God for all those ministry leaders uh, who th those key leaders and those who've been working uh, tirelessly to help keeping us together. So please go to our website, see all things that are there that will give you opportunity to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. But really quickly, I do want to remind you that after the service today at 12 o'clock, we'll have our brunch bunch. We'll go over the, the sermon and have fellowship in the brunch bunch. And then at 1 p.m., um, Minister Cheeks will host a special Mother's Day Zoom. This is for all ladies. All ladies can join us uh, on the special Mother's Day Zoom. That'll be at one o'clock today. The Zoom information is right there. The Zoom meeting number and ID is right there. You can also find this uh, on our Facebook page, on our Instagram page. So come on in at one o'clock, our, our special Mother's Day Zoom. Get that meeting ID, take a picture of the screen right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then uh, I want to remind you that those who want to share with us on Friday, as we reach out virtually to give our members and friends hugs. The Cheeks family want to share with you all on Zoom as well. So this Friday, we'll be sharing with the 30 through the 49 year olds. We had a great time with the 70 and up crew. We had a great time with the, the saved, uh, the grown and saved crew, the 50 through the 69 crew. We had a phenomenal time with them on Friday. And we're looking forward to this Friday coming on the 15th. And so you when you register, you'll get the Zoom information right there. So please register so that we can see your faces and join with you uh, in the fellowship. And then on third Saturday, on third Saturday, our Kingdom Pearls will be getting together. Remember, first and third Saturday is also for our children's church. And then our Kingdom Gents will be together on the fourth Saturday. So make sure you get that information too. Just visit our website to get all that information. And then those for you who have a heart of giving and those who are operating in the spirit of generosity, we indeed are grateful for you and how you've continued to let the Lord to use you uh, uh, in a, a miraculous way. And so we're asking that you would continue to be consistent and faithful in your giving unto God. It has been a blessing to the ministries so that we can be who we need to be. And particularly in this day and season and time, we're getting ramped up and prepared to assist as many as we possibly can who will be impacted as far as unemployment, uh, maybe health concerns and medical bills and so forth and so on. Never know what it, the needs may be, maybe just food or daily needs, whatever it is, your contributions and donations, your tithes, your offerings have helped us to prepare and to get ready and even to help those immediately. And even as soon as this pandemic came upon us, we were ready to move. And so we thank God for your giving. There are three ways to give. You can go online, you can mail it in, and you can use the app called Givelify. Just search for Shiloh Baptist Church. And so we ask God's blessings. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and privilege to give unto you, to bless you uh, in the resources that you've given to us to steward, to manage, to be faithful over. And we're returning it unto you that you might utilize it for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. And ask that you would utilize the ministries of Shiloh to be a blessing to those who are in need. And so we ask now, God, as those who are giving, that you would pour back into them, multiply apply God in the name of Jesus God I thank you for what you're going to do even in this moment of blessing you through our offering our tithes and our offerings to God be the glory for the great things that he has done I'm just double checking make sure we got everything hallelujah praise the Lord all right listen it's time for the word look at somebody before we get there I want to say this too uh did, did I did I lift that one I, let me double check make sure oh here it is praise the Lord listen some of you are saying what can I do to help how can I be a blessing? I signed up to be a volunteer, but what else? There's got to be more. There is more. Listen, God has put it on our hearts to, to start this campaign, this initiative called Love Your Neighbor. 
If you're looking for something to do, here's what I need you to do. I need you to start right at home. I need you to start at home, loving on those who are next to you and then spread out to your neighbors and then your neighborhood. So there's more information and creative ways for you to be a blessing to those who are near and dear, those who are next to you uh, that you can go uh, when you're running out, running your errands and picking up some daily necessities. Just grab an extra pack of whatever it is and leave it on your neighbor's doorstep. How about this? How about we start with introducing ourselves to our neighbors? Some of us been living next to some folk for years and don't even know our neighbors. Listen, start with introducing yourself to your neighbor and then go online, go there at shilohbcva.net forward slash L-Y-N or go onto the homepage and click that button, serve, and, and you'll find a list of opportunities to be a blessing. How many out there have been walking? If you've been walking the neighborhood, um, walk the neighborhood and stop and speak. If you see other folk, I know it's gonna be difficult through a mask, but holler at folk. If you're taking your children with you, have them paint rocks and put some encouraging messages on rocks. So as you walk along the path, leave those rocks for other walkers out there. There are various things that we can do to love our neighbors. That's the first one. The second one is stuff the bus. Fairfax County is doing an initiative called stuff the bus. There is a lot of information there. They're only doing it for two days, May 16th and May 19th from 10 to three. They're going to have various buses all throughout the county. There are about 10 locations, 10 buses and all different locations. So click on that, visit that on our website to find out what bus is near you. Go pick up some items that are on the requested item list that is there on our website and let the Lord use you to be a blessing to somebody else. So we want to love our neighbors. We want to stuff the bus. We want to be a blessing. So go to our website to get all of that information that will help us to continue to do the ministry work that the Lord has sent us to do and that we can be a blessing to those who are in need. Hallelujah. And so listen here, just before we get into the word, I'm indeed blessed and grateful for our next special guest who comes to prepare us for the word of God on today. Uh, she was born into music. I believe she was singing in the womb. Amen. Her mom is anointed. Her family is anointed. She's been born into a musical family. She's been singing since the tender age of four. She's a member of Macedonia Baptist Church. We've known her for a long time and we've watched her grow and develop into an awesome, aspiring, uh, major anointed young lady and mother. God bless her. And so she's not only a member of Macedonia, she's a member of the DC group, DC brace base group, Roderick Giles and Grace. And we, we know that they've been doing a phenomenal job uh, internationally and nationally. And so she's been afforded the opportunity to sing across the seas, the ponds uh, with such gospel greats as Dorothy Norwood, Shirley Caesars, and so many others. And so we thank God for her as she, she ministers also uh, with Grace and serves at the Michigan Park a Christian church uh, with their praise team. And so her greatest ministry, as she shares, is being a wife to Cornell Webb and the mother of her children, Melissa N. Raleigh. We do indeed see the glory of the Lord on her and her entire family. I'm blessed to have my little sister sharing with us on today and going to prepare our hearts for the word of God. I'm going to bring her on in now. April Webb, God bless you, sis. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. Um, Praise God. Happy Any Mother's Day. Happy Mother's, Mother's Day to you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, it is indeed a blessing to have you sharing with us on today. I thank God for you. We're so proud of you on behalf of my wife, uh, the entire Shiloh Church and leadership. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing with us today. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing your hubby with us, been blessing us in ministry. And we thank God for those moments when you still steal away and play hooky, come share with us. But we thank you for being <laughs> with us on today uh, to minister to our hearts. So I'm looking forward to what the Lord has laid on your on your heart. So let him use you on today. God bless you, sis. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, Shiloh, I love you. Um, thank you for being great to my husband. And also to me and my children, um, we love you guys very much. Um, to Minister Cheeks, happy Mother's Day. I love you, big sis. I miss you. And can't wait to give you a big hug when this is all over, um, as well as hug all of my shallow family. Um, but as many of you know, um, Mother's Day is very special for me. Um, but uh, within the last year, um, many of you know that my mother was... Um, 
in the hospital last year um, and she was fighting for her life. And um, this time last year, she was just coming off the ventilator um, and just being able to speak and and go forth after being on a ventilator for eight days. Um, so this year, um, I'm extremely grateful, although uh, we're not currently together, I may walk down the street later, um, that my mother is still here and able to sing and able to, um, you know, give God praise. And um, I, I really do honor God for my mother. Um, and I thank God for sparing her life. Um, and so, she, I, there's no me without her, so I do appreciate her. Um, but we are here to get ready for the word. And um, the Lord laid upon my heart um, a couple of songs, and I'm just going to share them with you. Yes, they're a cappella, but I believe that um, the words and um, the melody will minister to you. So I hope that it does. And um, also, again, let's um, in the in the bottom of your screen, hit the love button. Let's love on um, Pastor Cheeks and Minister Cheeks and Nico. Hit a lot of hearts. Um, say we love you and we're praying for you, Pastor. Um, and we know that there is a word from the Lord on today. So thank you. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Economies down, folks can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done. For me, folks without homes, living out in the streets, and the drug habits, some say they just can't be. Muggers and robbers, no place seems to be safe, but you've been my protection every step of the way. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. It could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes or just alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic end but you didn't see fit to let none of these things be and every day by your power you keep on keeping me and i want to say thank you lord for all you've done for me it could have been me outdoors with no and no clothes or just alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic end but you didn't see fit to let none of these things be and every day by your power you keep on keeping me and i want to say hey thank you lord for all you've done lord you are good you've been so good lord you are good You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, because you've been so good. 
You've been in spite of it all, so good, oh Lord. You've been so good to me. God bless you, Shiloh. I love you. Hallelujah. God bless you, sis. Sending you virtual hugs. Happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you for Thank you. setting the atmosphere and preparing our hearts for God's word. We love you. God bless you, sis. We love you too. Enjoy Thank the rest you. of your day. Love on you the too. babies and hubby for us. Sure thing. Take care. Love you now. Hallelujah. My God. Anybody know the Lord has been so good to us. I don't know about you, but I can feel him. Thank you, April, for ushering his presence uh, into this service on today and preparing our hearts for the word of God. God has been so good to all of us. I, I thought I made mention, but I want to make sure I don't miss miss this. But I got to say happy Mother's Day to my mother in love. I, uh, my apologies if I missed it. But in my excitement and exuberance, I, I might have skipped over and I did not mean to omit your mom. Millie, God bless you. We love you down there. Fayetteville, North Carolina. We're coming to see you soon. Um, we love you. We're sending hugs to you. And we thank God for you and the blessing you've been to us all. And certainly I, I want to I wanna say this as well. I want to lift um, really quickly. I want to uh, just solicit your prayers for those who've lost loved ones. I want to pray particularly for those, one, who do not have relationship with their mothers, those who've lost their mothers. Um, and I want to ask God's presence for those who lost loved ones um, over the last three months uh, in this season that we've been journeying through. I want to particularly lift up the uh, Dunbar uh, Rollins family. I want to encourage them on today and ask God's presence in their lives in the passing of Pop uh, Owen Dunbar. Uh, He's been a blessing to us, to all of us, particularly the Cheeks family, been like a grandfather to us. And uh, we will indeed miss him. want to encourage also the Richardson Carson family. We we'll continue to pray for them uh, and all those who've lost loved ones. But even in this moment as well, I ask God's presence and blessings over the lives of those who don't have relationships with their mothers. I pray you reach out today. God quicken something in your spirit to just reach out to your mother and mothers who have a strange relationship with your children. May God lead you today to reach out to your children. Let's restore, rekindle those connections on today. And I want to ask God's presence to fill the void for those whose mothers have gone on to be with the Lord. We pray God's presence in your life as well. May the Lord continue to bless you. I just wanted to lift that really quickly before we get into the word of God. Anybody uh, ready for the word? Come on, look at somebody next to you and tell them it's word time. It's time for the word. Somebody post that, type that in, post that in, type it in the comment box. We're praying for all mothers. We're praying God restores relationships with mothers in, in their children. We're praying God moves in the lives of those who've lost mothers. And we're praying for those who've lost loved ones in their lives. And certainly we thank God for him hearing our prayers. Now, if you would turn with me in your Bibles, on your mobile devices, wherever it is you have your word, pull your sword out now. Turn with me to 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 21. 2 Samuel chapter 21, those on the call. Those on the conference call, thank you again for sharing with us this morning. Second Samuel chapter 21, second Samuel chapter 21. I'll be reading from the New King James translation, the New King James version, second Samuel chapter 21. Very unorthodox text on today, but trust me, we're going somewhere. God is speaking and I pray we hear him. Second Samuel chapter 21, beginning at verse two, the new King James version reads thusly. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. The children of Israel had sworn protection to them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the children of Israel in Judah. Therefore, David said to the Gibeonites, what shall I do for you? And with what shall I make atonement that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said to him, 
we will have no silver or gold from Saul or from his house, nor shall you kill any man in Israel for us. So he said, whatever you say, I will do for you. Then the king answered, as for the man who consumed us and plotted against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the territories of Israel, let seven men of his descendants be delivered to us and we will hang them before the Lord in Jabia of Saul, whom the Lord chose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth and the, the son of Jonathan and the son of Saul, because the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan and the son of Saul. So the king took Armony and Mephibosheth, the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Ea, whom she bore to Saul, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, and the son of uh, Barzilla, and the Mohelithite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hung them on the hill before the Lord. So they fell all seven together and were put to death in the days of harvest and in the first days in the beginning of the Bailey harvest. Now Rispa, the daughter of Ai, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on a rock from the beginning of harvest until the late rains poured on them from heaven. And she did not allow the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. And David was told what Rispa, the daughter of Aha, the concubine of Saul, had done. And David was told what Rispa, the daughter of Aha, the concubine of Saul, had done. Blessed is the reading of God's holy word. You may be seated, even in the presence of the Lord, wherever it is you find comfort there uh, in your home. I want to share with you for the moment that is mine from this text on this special Mother's Day occasion and Sunday service. Thanking all of you for tuning in to all of our guests, to all of our virtual members, to all of our friends and families. Thank you so much again for sharing with us on today. Happy Mother's Day to you. I want to share from this text, from this phrase, a mother's love, a mother's love, a mother's love. Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we just ask again that as you've provided your presence at the start of this service and even at the outset of this day, God, I pray that we even experience you right now. Let us hear you through your preached word. Let us feel your presence through this moment of sharing through your holy writ. God, let these scriptures come to life and might they be lived in each and every one of us. God, I'm praying for not only breakthroughs and deliverance, but I'm praying for healing. God, heal our land. and Heal those who are ill and those who've been stricken by the COVID-19 coronavirus. In the name of Jesus, God, with the blood of Jesus, send forth healing right now. I rebuke you, coronavirus, in the name of Jesus. I rebuke, I rebuke this pandemic in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, for healing in this land. God, I thank you for what you shall share with us. Speak, Lord, and I pray it accomplishes what you so designed this message to do, that it won't return to you void. I pray, God, that salvation would be in our house, that salvation would be in our homes, even right now. God, let somebody ask, what must they do to be saved? I pray somebody receives the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. God, I thank you for what you shall do and what you're doing right now. In the matchless, majestic name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. And we all said, amen. Amen. A mother's love. The late, great Dr. Miles Monroe once said that women are masterful examples of incubators. It goes on to say that a woman possesses the unique prowess and unique ability to take what is given them and to do much with it or even produce something more than what they are given. 
In other words, if you're a woman, if you give a woman a seed, she'll give you a baby. If you give her groceries, she'll give you a meal. If you give her a thread and a needle, she'll give you clothing. If you give her frustration, she'll give you hell. And likewise, if you give her the Oval Office, she'll give you a better country than what we've had in the past. Should have gotten an amen right there. Women have the unique God-given ability to do more with what is given them. Not only does she possess the ability to produce, but mothers also possess the ability to naturally protect whatever she produces. Whatever has been productive or has been seen by the productivity of her hand will also be at the hand of her protection. One of the beautiful things about mothers is that if you want to see the ugly side of any mother, go on and mess with their children. You will see an ungodly side of any mother if you mess with their children. As a matter of fact, this story that I read in your hearing is a prolific portrait and portrayal of a mother's protection over her children. We've read this story in which historically, when Joshua was in his God-given leadership role over Israel and upon entering the children of Israel into Canaan, he established a covenant with the Gibeonites who were part of the Canaanites. If I can just teach through here, the name in the passage Amorites is an alias that is synonymous to the Canaanites. The Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel. They were the ones Joshua made a deal with or a covenant with upon leading the children of Israel into Canaan. The deal was binding for a lifetime. Basically, they would be friends and there would be no war between the two. But when Saul was king, Saul violated the deal and launched an all out attack against the Gibeonites just to establish his authority and to feed his arrogance. The deal had been violated. So when David steps on the scene, when David steps into office, David revisits this foreign policy and has negotiations with the Gibeonites and says, I want to rectify this issue. What can we do? Notice the Gibeonites say, we don't want your money. We don't even want your resources. We don't even want to kill any of the Israelites for what we've suffered. Listen to what they said, y'all. We want you to bring us seven sons of the guy that broke the deal. We think he ought to feel the pain. We think his family ought to feel the pain of what was caused on our house. David said, I'll do it. So David goes, he collects seven men of Saul's family. Two of them are his sons. The other five are his grandsons from his other daughters. But two of them are from a woman named Rizpah. The Bible calls her Saul's concubine. In other words, we know her as his side chick. They apprehended these seven members of Saul's family and they hung them all on a hill. At the outset of the story, David goes to God and asks, why is there a famine in the land? God responds, there's a famine going on because of Saul's bloodstained house. The whole nation is in trouble and suffering because of what's happening in the 1600 Pennsylvania. I mean, excuse me, the whole nation is in trouble and suffering famine because of Saul's disobedience in attacking the Gibeonites. So God, what? is the solution. God tells David there must be an atonement. There must be a sacrifice given for this famine to pass over. Okay, let me say it this way. In order for the famine to go away, the king's sons had to be sacrificed on a hill. We, we need to establish atonement and in order to establish atonement is to take the king's kids and kill them before the Lord on a hill. And if God is satisfied with the sacrifice, his wrath of famine will be lifted and rain will come to establish prosperity. 
Okay, I'm sorry. I, I'm just a little bit excited. I can't even wait to get to the end of this message of this little Mother's Day message on today. But to help you see the Christological connection in the passage, because one day on Calvary's hill, somebody else's son hung for atonement to lift the wrath off of us. See, traditionally, we had to wait to the end of the message, but I can't wait, y'all. It's just too good to wait. The whole issue of what Jesus did on Calvary history has been rehearsing it to give us a preview of what Christ would come and do. Uh, uh, another king's son would come and lift the wrath off of humanity. I'm sorry, that just shouts me right there. Um, but let me let me backtrack. Let's walk through this text together. Look at verse 10. You still got your Bibles open? Good. Look at verse 10. Rispa only gets one verse in the whole Bible. In, in that one verse, she paints a picture of a portrait of one of the most prolific demonstrations of maternal love that we have ever seen in the Bible. Unfortunately, she gets overlooked, but she does the one thing that locks her name in the portals of the biblical canon for the rest of human history. Watch what she does, y'all. They take her sons, they kill them, hang them on a hill. While her boys are there hanging their dead, she takes a sackcloth and spreads it out under the tent from, from, bringing the bar, from the bringing of the barley season until the raining season. Biblical historians would tell us that the contemporary equivalent of the time that she was out there was between April and October. She was out there for seven months. Look what she did, y'all. She went out there, made sure that predators did not devour her sons for seven months. Okay, pastor, can you help us understand why is what this woman did prolific? Uh, Cause some of y'all are reading this text saying, I don't even know what's going to come out of this. Okay. Her sons are dead. In contrast to the Romans, the Jews did not hang you alive. The Jews would kill you first. Then they hung you. Jesus experienced Roman crucifixion in which you hung alive and you died while you're hanging. But in this text, they were killed first and then they were hung. The issue is, she says, if my children have to be sacrificial lambs for God to be sacrificed, even if they're dead, I will protect them. Help me, God. Here's the first thing we learn about this passage. We learn that a mother's love outlives a mother's child. Oh, God, help me right there. Uh, a mother's love uh, outlives a mother's child. It outlives us. A mother's love is not contingent on the love of her child. A mother's love uh, is contingent on the life of the mother. As long as the mama is alive, she's going to love her children even after they're gone. Because a mother's love did not start with the birth of a child. A mother's love started when she found out she was pregnant. Since it did not start with the birth, it cannot end with death. Once you start loving as a mother, it goes on for the rest of her life. As long as a mother is alive, she is going to love her children. And if they're gone, she is going to love somebody else's children. A mother's love is stronger than death itself. You can't kill a mother's love. You've got to kill a mother in order to kill a mother's love. But as as long as she is living and breathing, she is going to love her children, even if her love outlives her children. A mother's love is stronger than death. And not only is it stronger than death, but it is also stronger than her child's disgrace. Oh, help me, God. Y'all ain't going to say amen right here, but I, I got a couple of amens in my desk drawer. Let me go get them real quick. Um, according to the custom, after somebody died, uh, they're supposed to be buried. But according to social custom, if they're not buried, they're left unburied and it is a sign of public disgrace. They, they did not get a pop proper burial. Uh, they did not get proper dignity. Uh, they didn't get, get proper disposal of their remains. These boys hung out there for seven months. It was a disgrace. Her children were disgraced. But mother says, I'm going to cover them in their disgrace. Uh, some of you can't respond right there at this point because you got perfect children. But if you want to discover a mother's love, go interview the mother whose child is living a public disgrace or living a life publicly that isn't of God. 
Go interview a mother whose child made a mistake and is serving life in prison for a murder sentence. Go interview a mother whose child is a public disgrace. That mother will tell you while y'all are dogging my child, there's nothing my child can do that will make me stop loving my child. When everybody else is walking away, I'm going to stay. Okay, watch this. The woman's children are out there suffering because of their daddy's mistake. They are victims of their daddy's mess up. No shade to my brothers. We are out there holding it down, but they are victims of their daddy's mistake. They have become signatures of public disgrace. And mama says, I will be the only one who would not leave them hanging. She said alone. She said, I will be the last one here. Why? Because no mother leaves her child hanging. No matter what he or she does, a mother will always be by their side. I can hear this mother saying, I didn't agree with what they did. I didn't agree with how they live, but I will never abandon them as their mother. I didn't like what they did. I didn't like how they lived. I don't like what they've done, but I am still their mother and that's still my child. If you don't believe me, I bet somebody watching here today has a grandmother who has a wall in her house or a mantle or a dresser somewhere in her room or in the house that has all of the grandchildren's pictures up on it. Well, these new and improved day, these new day glam moms, they got mobile devices on the cloud. They got pictures on the cloud. And so your grandmom would love to be bragging about her grandchildren. She'll swipe through her recent photos to show you talk about them, run down the rap sheet of all of them. This one went to college. This one uh, got a job over here. This one started their own business. This one got married. This one got us some grandchildren. But then there would be that one that had a not so good history. And she would say, now, don't you talk about this one. That's still my baby. Even when you've reached a place of disgrace, your grandmama and your mama will still be there. Her sons are, are hung up in disgrace. Her sons are dead, hanging in shame. Mama says, I'm going to be there for my children, even when they've reached the place of disgrace. The text says she gets her tent. She sets up a sackcloth, which is a sign of grief and mourning. Verse 10 says she goes out there and I don't know how she did this, but she kept the birds from consuming them. She kept the predators from devouring them. I have no clue how she did it. It just says for seven months, the birds and the predators did not touch them. Oh God, they wanted to get close, but she wouldn't let it happen. Okay. She, she, she sees that they're out uh, in disgrace. She knows they're dead and decomposing, but guess what y'all, you, you will not get to them no matter what state they're in. Okay, y'all, aren't you going to say anything? I don't know. You may, may, may say something, may not, but it's all good because some of you need to thank God that you are where you are right now because your mama waved off some predators. Oh, amen, somebody. If it was some boys that wanted to get you, but mama just waved them off. It was some hussy. Oh, wait, be more coming out of me. It was some little girls trying to get to you, but mama waved them off. It was some friends that weren't good to you and mama waved them off. Had she let them stay in your life, you wouldn't be as successful as you are in your life. Thank God that God got enough sense to put protection through your mama to keep you away from from people who have no reason being near you. Even in a state of life when that's not, oh, that's all you attracted, mama was still right there. They're, they're out there decomposing, y'all. They're out there decomposing, they're out there stinking, but mama says, nope. I know where they are. I know what state they're in. And I know that they're attracting no good, but I am right there to stand in between them and everything that's coming their way that's no good. Thank God for a mama who knows what state you're in. You, My God. God, you, you won't admit it, but we are in some stinking seasons in our lives every now and again, in some seasons where we did not care who was around us or who came in contact with us. But when we didn't have enough sense to look out for ourselves, mama stepped in and said, not today. They're able to keep us when we couldn't keep ourselves. And if that be the best case, my God, she proves that mama is that one person in your life who can protect you at the extent
scent of your stench. She is the only one that can love you through your deterioration and your stench. They've been out there for seven months, y'all. If the birds and the animals don't get her children, the elements will. She can't stop the process, but what she can do is protect them. She she has to endure the process. She's got to come into contact with the difficulties of the seasons that are changing. Thank God for that one person who will never walk away from us during our most stinky seasons in life. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. Her love is stronger than life. Her love is stronger than disgrace. And if she was out there for seven months, she was not out there just to endure deterioration because they already deteriorated shortly after seven months. My God, within those seven months, she was out there for seven months, not just to preserve them during the deterioration, but she was out there for seven months, y'all, until it rained. She stayed out there from the beginning of harvest season until it rained. She, she wasn't just out there to cover her children. She was out there to, to cover her children until God showed up. God, God has blessed you with a mother who will cover you until God shows up. Mother was praying for you and covering you until God moved in your life because part of her ministry of maternity is her relationship with God. This mother was not just staying out there to cover her children, but she was out there until God moved. And there are some mothers that are watching and listening to me right now that stayed on your knees until God moved. You continued to fast until God God move. You didn't stop serving, stop giving. You never stopped worshiping and praising. You waited until God moved. Do I have some parents out there who've ever labored with God until God finally moved? Okay, I'm done. My sisters and brothers, I'm a little bothered by verse 11. Here's what it says. When David was told what Ahaz's daughter Rizpah, Saul's concubine, did, um, he then moved and did something. But I, I just was a little bothered by that. I don't know. Uh, you may not care as to why I'm bothered, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, I'm bothered with verse 11 because the writer documents Rispa's story. Yeah, he documents Rispa's story based on her act of her maternity in her maternal love in verse 10. If that's the case, why is the last thing that you wrote about her is that she Saul's side chick? If you put her in the story for something positive, why would you make sure that the last thing you wrote about her is negative? If you wrote the whole story on how she portrayed motherhood in a way we've never seen before, why would you tell us you know she's Saul's concubine. Saul's not even around. Saul is dead. And the writer is trying to remind us of a dead relationship in her life when it doesn't even matter. Do y'all know folk like that? Shh, can we talk quiet as care? Do y'all know folk who can't stand the fact that you're making progress in your life so they keep reminding you of people who used to be in your life? They keep bringing up some dead seasons in your life. Saul isn't alive anymore. And the last thing we need to know is that Saul's, this is Saul's side chick. I think they did her an injustice. Why can't they just say she was covering her children. First of all, y'all, every mother on here will testify that becoming a mother changes the life you had before you became it. Amen. The child introduces some stuff in your life that what you, you then that's different than what you used to do. And now it has been limiting or eliminating altogether the stuff that you used to do because the responsibility has now hit your life at a whole new level. Maybe the message ought to be to get from today is that the failures of womanhood are overwhelmed by the successes of motherhood. Preach cheeks. In other words, it doesn't matter what kind of life you had before you had a child. 
now if you stepped up and made your responsibilities as a mother bigger than the life you had before the child. You have fulfilled God's call on your life because for some of us, it took a child to change us. Amen, somebody. I know you ain't coming here to hear this today. You will always have people bringing up dead seasons in your life, especially when they have passed away and you've passed those seasons. Yes, that was me, but not anymore. I used to hang up, but now I got to take care of my children. Oh, I can't do that anymore, boo-boo. Thank you for extending the invitation, but I'm working on my legacy. I'm working on creating generational wealth. I'm working on the call and the assignment that God put on my life through my lineage, through my inheritance, my babies. I got to change my focus. I got to change my goals. I got to change my object. Thanks be unto God. God let motherhood come into your life so that it would raise your responsibilities and change your morality. Preach, Cheeks. I'm trying to do the best I can. She's not bothered about what she used to be, y'all. She's only concerned about the maternity that's currently on her life. That's more important than any lifestyle that she used to have. Somebody ought to thank God that God changed your life by putting responsibilities on your life. So check it, y'all. I'm out. She's out there, y'all, caring for her children until God moved. She, she's out there covering her babies, watching over them, making sure no predators come and devour them. They, they're out there hanging. She's out there covering. I, I know another mother who did that. She, she, she was out there when they hung her son too. This wasn't the first mama who was out there watching their child hang. M maybe, just maybe, y'all, a mother never stops. This, this is what caused me to think this. It, it, a mother never stops being in labor even after the child is born. M maybe the true sign of maternity is laboring over your child, not until they died, but until you die. That, that, that's when you hear Mama say, that's my baby, but but that's your 50-year-old child. That That's going to always be my baby, but that's your 65-year-old child. M maybe being a mother is laboring over your child, not through birth, but until you die. R Rispa is out there until the end. Mother's love is not based on the child. It's based on the mother. Th those whose mothers have gone on, might I suggest to you, your mama loved you until the day she died. Her, her love was not just based on your life. Her love was based on her. We all ought to be grateful for the rispas in our lives who will love us no matter what, who will cover us until the end, who will protect us, watch over us, and be there for us. It's a joyous day and a great day as it, this reminds us of not only of the love of a mother, but it also it becomes a duplicate of the love of the father, the one who loves us unconditionally, the one who loves us not based on our lives and the lives that we live, but based on his life. The Bible reminds us of that in John 3, 16. That's why he sent his son, not because of the good that we were doing but because of the love he had for us. And so let today be a reminder that we got somebody in our lives who loves us unconditionally and her name is Mama. She is the, the, the manifestation of a God who loves us unconditionally. Anybody know his name? His name is Jesus. He died for us. He was risen for us. He sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. And we see the very essence. We see the characteristics of the God we serve and that we've come to love even through our mamas. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for sharing with us today. I'm indeed glad that you took the time to, to come on into our broadcast and to hear what God had for you on today. I pray you were blessed through our youth and our teens. God, thank God for them and, and all of what God is working in through their lives. And we pray that their mothers are blessed and proud of them. We pray that God continues to bless the web household and certainly all of those who are viewing and sharing with us today. I ask the Lord to continue to visit you all, not only just in your needs, but also in your wants. Might he do exceedingly and abundantly above all. 
might he continue to protect you and watch over you. At this time, I'm going to ask if there's somebody viewing us today who does not have a relationship with God the Father by way of Jesus Christ. Here's an opportunity for you to receive the Lord our God in the pardon of your sins. God has been pursuing a love relationship with you, a relationship that's real and personal. I wish I had somebody who can testify that this is not religion. This is about a relationship that you've come to know God. You've come to know yourself even through God. And by walking with Christ Jesus daily, you've begun to discover more about who you are and what he's planned for your life. And certainly he will be with you. He will allow you to grow and develop you. And there are seasons in lives where you may feel that he's not there. That's because the test giver doesn't talk while the test is being taken. And so we thank God for his presence. Even when you don't trace him, you still know he's still there. You still loves us. We may not feel or sense his hand, but we know his heart. And that's where it all starts, a relationship coming to know who God is and who you are in him. And it all begins with three simple things, believing that Jesus is Lord, believing that he died for you and believe that he's risen for you and has all power. If that's you, just receive and believe those three things and pray and ask God, come into your heart, change your life, forgive you from sin and allow you to forgive yourself. Receive the forgiveness that he's given to all of us. God, I believe Christ Jesus is your son. I believe that he died the death I should have died. And I believe that he's risen with all power that makes it even possible for me to live this life I have. And certainly, God, I thank you to know that even though there's trials and tribulations, Christ overcame them all. I need him in my life to help me get through these seasons in my life that are most difficult. So believing and receiving Jesus Christ doesn't mean it's going to be a life full of of flowery beds of ease. No, there's going to be work. There's going to be opposition. There's going to be adversarial issues, demonic agitation. Just because you've changed the course, just because you've decided, turned over a new leaf, I want to live for God. That doesn't mean that the adversary is going to lay back and allow it to happen without any type of uh, distraction. He will do work and he's working, but we ain't going to focus on him because God is greater. God is bigger. God is in charge. And he's demonstrating through our mothers daily how he loves us unconditionally. God bless you. If that's you and you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, visit our website, become a virtual member, or just go on there and share your testimony. Type in your testimony on that page or just when you register in and just share that God has touched your life. Even put in the comments. If you're not a member of Shallow Baptist Church, just write in the comments in the chat, in the live chat streaming on YouTube, how the Lord has changed your life, how the Lord has touched your life, how the Lord has blessed your life, not only just by uh, virtue, but even through your mama. Uh, how the the Lord has spoken to you, has developed you, has raised you through our mothers. God is good. Again, I pray blessings over those who've lost their mothers, those who are not in relationship with their mothers. I pray for healing, restoration. I pray, God, that he reconnects and restores. So God bless you again. We are indeed grateful for you sharing with us on today. I pray you enjoy the rest of this day celebrating in a different way. Doesn't mean we can't still celebrate. We're just not doing it the way we're used to. And so God has us in the land of the unfamiliar and it's all right. Enjoy, create new, new traditions, create new norms, create new opportunities to experience things you may have never experienced before. So enjoy this time. Enjoy this moment of sharing together. Even if you can jump on Zoom, get your mother to get on Zoom, get on some type of uh, video access to her through some uh, technology or technological advancement so that you can see your mother drive by, put your mask on, wave at your mother, do what's necessary to let your mama know that you love her and you're grateful for her love. God is good. God bless you. I pray you are blessed today. Thanks again for coming and enjoy the rest of the week. Thanks for tuning in. Listen, I want to say something too. Don't have any type of image or graphic to d- display it, but mark your calendars for May 31st. We've got something special that's going to happen. Um, we're going to start a segment on Sunday mornings of sharing with special individuals. I'm going to have special guests. God has afforded the opportunity for special guests to come in and share some information with us. And our first guest on May 31st, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock service here on this broadcast is Dr. Gloria Duayensu. She is the director of the Fairfax County Health Department. God has afforded an opportunity for her to come in and share some information with us in regards to maintaining our health 
while in this season of pandemic. Isn't God good? And so I'm looking forward to that and some other Sundays where we'll have segments where we'll bring on some individuals who can share some information that will help to encourage and empower, even inspire our lives to be lived in such a manner that God gets the glory. So mark your calendars, May 31st, we'll have our first uh, segment of sharing of that word of empowerment and encouragement to help us maintain our health on that morning. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Look at somebody next to you. If you're in a room with, with someone else, if you're not alone, or if you are alone, text somebody and say, do you know Lord Jesus Christ? Do you need to be saved? Uh, let me lead you to Jesus Christ and lead them to the Lord. Share with them the relationship you have with God the Father by way of Jesus Christ. Remind them that no one comes into the Father except by him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And I pray each and every one of you are living in such a manner that displays the glory of God, especially in a time like this. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you all. We'll see you next time. See you Wednesday night, Wednesday night, 715 on our call. Won't see you, hear your voice on our Bible study. And then go to the website, check out that link, stay virtually connected. It gives you all of the opportunities. If you're an adult, if you're used, it gives you an opportunity to serve, to volunteer, uh, to help somebody who's in need. And so check out those links as well. Click on serve on the homepage. You got to scroll down a little bit and then learn more about how to love your neighbor and how to go stuff the bus. God bless you. The Lord be with you. The Lord watch over and keep you. Remember one o'clock, we still have our brunch bunch at 12 noon. You got to get into the Facebook uh, group to get that info. And then at one, we have our uh, virtual sharing, our Zoom with our mothers, all ladies, not just mothers, but all ladies are invited to share on this Zoom. There's the meeting ID. Just go to zoom.us. Click on join a meeting and type in that code 710-7603-2478. It'll be hosted by my lovely wife, beautiful wife, Minister Constance Cheeks. She will share in that in that moment. And I'll be with y'all at the brunch bunch at 12. God bless you. See you in a few minutes. Y'all take care. Have a great one. Virtual hugs. Love you all. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you in the Lord watch over you and bless you with not only peace, but protection and provision. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, amen. Love y'all.